Hey guys, welcome back to the Untrained Unprofessional Workbench. I'm Nobody. How's it going? And today, I got something kind of special. You may have heard of this or seen the video that a QBO Tactical put out, and it is the antimatter scope switch. And I just got it. Let's open it up. All right, so first of all, that QR code, that actually takes you to the instruction video of how to put this together. It's a Vimeo, so it is not on YouTube that I have found, but it takes you straight to Vimeo so you can watch it and know how to assemble this. Looks like we have a little side-in target. Probably not a bad idea to make some photocopies of this in case you really screw up. It's always good to have a backup plan. This is close to my heart. I like stickers. And these stickers are pretty nice. <laughs> I got a good chuckle out of that, not for FUDs. All right, let's get into the meat and potatoes. Wow, looks pretty nice. Initial view of it looks pretty good quality. Let's start pulling this out. Here's our scope base. Really nice. Scope ring and Looks like so we can go ahead and fit to different scopes. Here's the little track in the wire. Okay. Some Vibratite. Here's our ring tops. And this should be hardware and this is our cover to hide the cables Ooh, silica gel could always use more of that all right so I don't have a rifle to put this on <laughs> but I got stuff to build one I'm gonna build one so that, that way <laughs> I just can see how this thing works Just getting everything mounted on here and just following the destructions in the video. I'm not really tightening it, I'm just snugged on. They say don't snug it or torque it on just yet. I'm using the supplied Vibratite. Okay. So that's on. Okay. This is when they suggest that you mount and adjust for your eye relief. Okay, so now that I think I got it set up where I want, I want you to torque it to 45 inch pounds and you just hopscotch back and forth. And 45. Hmm. Not too bad so far. All right, so next they just recommend leveling, which I got my two levels going, so I am level. Keep my gaps consistent here. And 15 inch pounds is what I'm looking for. 15, 15. Okay, looks like that is level. Shoulders just fine, it seems like. So far, still pretty easy. Okay, so it looks like for me, I need this about T36. So I can tell you that I like how 
all the hardware, it's the same size. They're not changing bits or anything all over the place. Look at that, I'm not paying attention and i am got the cable outside. So don't talk to a camera while you're doing this. All right, let's try and see how this feels. Okay. I'm getting excited, guys. This is gonna be fun. I'm gonna pull your, your cable so that way your, your bolt doesn't trap it or pinch it. Okay, still on track. Cool beans. All right, guess what? I get to do something over again because I was playing with this and watching ahead on the video and there is a reason why this is pushed forward, and that is so these cables are gonna be at basically 90 degrees to this adjustment. And if it's not, then it's gonna be off to the side and it's probably gonna walk off that little throw. So I'm gonna to have to adjust this whole thing back and re-level and do everything so make sure you pay attention to where this scope is pushed forward and above these little bearings that are located right here in the back of the mount. And it'll save you from having to do this over again. How's that for a tip? Okay guys, so I'm caught back up and tell, tell me if you can hear this. Let's... If I can precariously do this. Hear that tick, 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 tick sound? So what I'm trying to figure out now, here, let me get back dressed. All right, so what I'm figuring out, or trying to figure out is, is this as it's sliding hitting something or there's a little bearing right there that has the, the cable going around it. Is that hitting or making noise itself? So, or should I just not worry about it? But I'm gonna see what, what I can do first and hopefully get it to where it's not so, mo so loud. I don't know why, but for some reason it just bugs me. I would think for something that's 600 bucks that it wouldn't do that. Actually, it was 620 bucks. I tried putting a little bit of lube on it to see if maybe that was an issue, but it seems fine there. Not hearing anything there. I see the issue. The lube is telling a story. You can see where half of the bearing is touching and leaving a little bit of a spot there. Not wearing, but it's just rubbing just barely enough as it's cycling around, it's, it's touching. How to fix that? I don't know, might require a little bit of thinking. Well guys, I kind of jumped ahead as I was kind of troubleshooting some things. I think I'm going to have to talk to them about that little bearing and what's going on with it. See if it's just normal or, or what. I mean, honestly, watching the instruction video, I did not hear the little clicks that I was hearing on this one. So, who knows, whatever. Anyway, running this part wasn't bad at all. It's just a matter of keeping this thing forward and tightening down these cables while trying to pull it as tight as possible. Fairly easy and straightforward. The little hack that I'll tell you that I did on this little wire uh, cover here. Now, in the instruction video he's talking about, it's like if you're trying to get in these pieces and it's too long, I mean, you're obviously gonna hit the bottom of the scope mount. He suggests that you cut them. I did not cut it. What I ended up doing was taking my little torch and I just gently heated it to make it a little more pliable. And I got that heat down past here and I just slid it 
into place. One other little thing. In the middle of this little cover, there's a vertical rib that divides the cables. What's going to happen is, is that it's going to want to dig in as you're trying to angle it down and it's going to catch on your pick rail. Go ahead and put a chamfer on it and that'll help it slide up and under. Now on the Tango 6T, they do talk about how it's kind of like a medium tightness. It'll take a little bit of getting used to. It's not super, super smooth by any means, but it's not bad. Now I still need to cut these guys right here, but I'm trying to decide if I do that before I talk to them or after I talk to them. I, I don't know, you know, if I'm going to talk to them at all, I guess I should say. But I need to get out to the range and go ahead and shoot this. I, I actually have to sight it in. I need to adjust the uh, gas bleed off from the gas block and get that tuned. So there's still quite a bit that I have to do on it, but so far, that is kind of cool. Maybe I'll just leave these flopping around so it could pop me in the eye too. Ah, I'm not cool enough. Well guys, that's the scope switch. Really cool concept. You know, I've really enjoyed playing with it, you know, in the short amount of time that I've had this, you know, today's day one of messing, or at least the shooting part of it. Um, not that hard to install as long as you have some basic stuff, like a way to hold your upper receiver and some basic tools. If you don't have the basic tools, you know, they're, they're might be kind of hard to, to do, but it's not as hard as the way they made it sound in the video that you could have some difficulty. So don't be afraid to do it. Um, as to whether I think this is going to be the next latest greatest thing, I don't know because, you know, I think the hardest thing that this has to overcome is you, you go from holding right here to where you're used to shooting and then all of a sudden you're changing how you're gripping everything and different zoom lengths. It, it just feels odd. And I think it's something that the individual shooter is going to get used to and everything. I'm assuming, you know, just training, you're going to train through things. Is that the end of the world? No, I don't think it's the end of the world at all. But really cool to play with. Um, as to the price, I'm not going to tell you, you know, whether, you know, 620 bucks for the Tanadize, you know, is well worth it. You know, all that kind of stuff is very subjective to the individual and you have to decide, you know, whether it is worth it versus just running a two and a half to 10, you know, with an offset red dot, if that gets it done for you or not, and you just keep your current setup. But it seems to be really well built. So far, again, very limited rounds through it, so take that for what it is. But it is kind of cool. New stuff usually is. Thank you.